and welcome back to the Dreamcast. I am your host, Denise Walsh. I combine science, scripture, and stories that will inspire you to dive deep, break through your own personal glass ceiling, and design a life of your dreams. Are you overworked, overstressed, and overwhelmed? You want life to be different, but you don't even know how to get there. Man, oh man, I lived there myself. And in my experience with working with thousands of people from all walks of life, there is one simple thing that holds so many of us back, a lack of time management. We may know what we want, but we often don't know how to get there and don't feel like we can add one more thing into our already busy day. And that's exactly why I created the Dream Life Action Planner. It's a 90-day inspired game plan that will give you total clarity on your greatest priorities and skyrocket your productivity on the tasks that matter most. And now, for a limited time, you can get your own copy for free. And when you go to denisewalsh.com slash action. Denise Walsh, D-E-N-I-S-E-W-A-L-S-H dot com slash action, A-C-T-I-O-N. Put your information in and we will send this action planner directly to your inbox so you can set your goals, reprioritize your calendar, and design your dream life today. Big, big welcome back to the Dreamcast. In today's interview, I'm interviewing someone who says that his rock bottom self was a wreck of a human. Since then, he's lost over 130 pounds of body fat. He quit heavy drinking. He quit smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and then got addicted to bodybuilding instead. Talk about a full-blown transformation. He then got his personal training certificate and hasn't looked back since. His life now is dedicated to you, not with giving you a fad diet or a quick fix, but helping you experience true healthy habit change. And whether he's on the show, the doctor is sharing his transformation with his clients, or he's hanging out with Jillian Michaels from The Biggest Loser, he knows that you can reach your goals. And he's here to help you provide the support, the accountability, and the roadmap to do so. So big Dreamcast welcome to Jeremy Reed from Jeremy Reed Fitness. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to be here. I am super excited to connect with you because we are in a a group on Facebook, a business building group, essentially, where we're learning how to uh, grow our market and network and market, you know, all the things that you do when you're an entrepreneur. And I've loved getting to know your story. You're so helpful. And you just add a lot of value, not just to the group, but I can tell that you add value wherever you go. And you have a crazy transformation story, losing over 130 pounds. When I say transformation, I'm like a total 180, right? Like total different person because now your life is about fitness and nutrition. So I want to hear before you lost the weight, tell me what life was like in that rock bottom type moment. Life at that time was pretty chaotic for several reasons. One, I, I got married really young. I got married at 19 and into an instant family. My wife had a, a young girl at that time. And, and so there was just, there was chaos of being super young and thrown into responsibility that I had no idea what I was really taking on, but, you know, just felt called to do it. And then we had just some situations in our life that were incredibly stressful. And I quickly realized that I turned to food for handling emotions, handling stress. And so without really consciously realizing it, I became incredibly addicted to food. I had a massive binge eating disorder. You know, I was smoking at that time. So then my, you know, every, every, every way of coping with emotions escalated. My smoking increased to two packs a day. I was drinking every night, eating literally just massive, massive amounts of food, uncontrollable amounts of food, and quickly ballooning up to well over 300 pounds. And it was chaotic. My life was chaotic. And, and it was just kind of going from one coping mechanism to another, to another, to another. Right, right. Because you're smoking and then you're drinking and then you're eating and you're like, how can I even make it through the day? Right. Yeah. It it really was one of those things where it was like, just, you know, looking back, kind of just a massive blur of stress and just like reaching for anything in my life to to take away the, the stress, the stuff that was going on. Yeah. So when did you get to a place where you're like, I can't live like this anymore? I, I can't do this. This is not working. I was 24 years old. I woke up one day and I, it was one of those times where 
for some reason, you just, you, you take a really good look at your life. Like it wasn't just like, Oh, I don't feel good. Or, Oh, I'm hungover. I shouldn't have done that last night. It was like, I need to really examine how I'm living and, and what, what I'm about, who, who am I as a human and what am I doing? And quickly just like identifying all of these things that, that were just horrible and, and how I felt and how I looked and how I felt about myself, it became incredibly apparent that I deserved better than to be living the way I was living. It wasn't like, a, oh, I need to get my act together. It was a, immediately my standards raised and I was like, no, no, no. Like you deserve as a human, as you have so much more potential than how you're living. And immediately there was no other option then than to take action in improving that. Wow. I think that's something we don't do often enough is really take a close inventory on what life is like now. Yeah. And sometimes we have to get uncomfortable with where we are now. So we will actually take steps in a different direction. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I've challenged and now, you know, I've fast forward to what I do for a living. And I, I challenge people to really look inward in, in everything. Be very, very honest with yourself mm. and see your life and see your habits and see your attitude, especially your attitude towards yourself, <laughs> you know, and see it for what it is, but not worse than it is. Like, don't get discouraged about it, but, but you have to see it for what it is so that you can make the necessary changes to, to grow from there. Right. So you get uncomfortable with here, essentially, like where life is now. And you say, okay, I can't stay here anymore. I've got to do something different. What did you do first? First thing I did was I went out and joined a gym. Uh, I'd never worked out in my life. I went out and joined a 24-hour fitness. At that time, we were living in Lancaster, California, out in the middle of the desert. And I went out and joined a a 24-hour fitness. I walked right in and right past where you sign up and and check in is the, the cardio equipment. And I, I walked and I saw this woman doing an elliptical machine. And I, I, I can still remember, like, you know, it was many years ago now, but I can still remember watching her, like, for two seconds and going, I could do that. Like, I, I could do that movement. That's not a very complicated movement. It doesn't seem too hard on my body, you know. And so I, I got on um, an elliptical machine. I can't remember how many minutes I did. It wasn't many. It was not very <laughs> – I, I look like – I'm sure I look like complete walrus on this machine, hopping and puffing. And, and um, but I did it. And I can remember after that first time being like, this is how you do it. Like this, I did it. Like I succeeded. I already succeeded. I, I followed through with what I was going to say. I had this incredible sense of accomplishment. And even though I got off the machine, went right outside and lit up a cigarette, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I can remember being like, this is how I'm going to do it. Like it was, it was just very, very clear. It was late. Like I, I wrapped my head around it instantly of like, okay, I just did it. Like I got active and mm-hmm. And so this, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep like progressing in this and then immediately started taking a look at, okay, what about food? Like, what about this other demon in my life over here? Did you realize at that point that it was like addiction or you just oh, knew yeah. it wasn't good? Okay. So you no, had, Oh yeah. It was very, very clear. And I, I was <laughs> to the point where it was a massive area of shame for me in my life. I was hiding a lot of it from my family, from my wife, because I was so ashamed of, of that behavior. But at the same time, I couldn't stop. Well, and often it impacts daily life, like going out of your way to get, you know, or hiding it or it's like in your brain, you know what I mean? So you think about it all the time too. Yeah. I mean, and I've, you know, obviously I've I've been addicted to nicotine. I've been addicted. So I, I, it is an addiction is very, very real. And it's, it's actually, in my opinion, probably one of the harder addictions that you can really face because you can, you know, you, you can, like I did, force myself to stop having cigarettes and you will eventually not be addicted to, to nicotine anymore. You can stop alcohol. You can stop anything and remove yourself from that environment, but you can't stop food. Like you have to eat food to, to live. And so it's one of those things where I realized it wasn't just about not being around food or, or not, you know, it, it had more to do with what was going on up here in my head than anything else. And so I really just took this approach of like, I have to rewire everything. I, I, I can't be the same person that I was. I have to take a look at literally everything I do. After getting some exercise, so literally on day one, the first thing I did with my nutrition or my food was I stopped drinking regular soda. That was the first thing I changed. I knew, I knew there was tons of stuff that I needed to change, but I was drinking over a 12 pack of Mountain Dew a day. And I knew like that had to stop. I knew that had to stop. And so I stopped drinking regular soda. I switched over to diet, which I hated, but you know, I was like, I'll, I'll get used to it. Something I don't care. Like I can't drink regular soda anymore. 
and that was, you know, that was kind of like my first step. It was like getting some, getting that first cardio session and, and quitting something that I thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> every single day was my, like my first step into kind of turning my life around. And, um, you know, it just, I, it certainly wasn't easy, but again, it has to do with that raising your standards in my opinion, right? We will not, we will not live below our standards. We won't, we will not tolerate it. And so when you truly raise your standards, when you are like, I am better than this, like literally like I'm, I'm better than this, you won't, you won't live below that. And so it's, it's not that it was easy, but it allows you then to embrace the necessary steps that are going to come that have to be taken in order for you to achieve what you want to achieve. And so shortly after that, it was like, got up to like, I think I was doing around 30 minutes of cardio on the elliptical. And I can remember then ha starting to have these chest pains when I started breathing, when I was breathing, it was like from my lungs, like my lungs were burning. And I remember going, you know, you got to smoke. Like if you're, if you're ever going to get past this mark, you got to quit smoking. And so I was like, okay. So I quit, I quit smoking cold turkey and, and highly, highly, highly reduced my alcohol intake down to where it was, mo it was just, you could say normal or healthy, you know, a like casual drink here and there, but, and, and just started making these step by step by step approach to turning my life around. And uh, a big one uh, that I also worked on was how I treated myself, how I spoke to myself. And, um, and that's a big one that I think a lot of people needed to look inward as well. Yeah. We, we many times will say things to ourselves that we would not ever say to even our worst enemy. Yeah. And it, we believe what we say. We, we truly do. And so these casual insults we throw at ourselves in the mirror, you know, you get out of the shower and you look at yourself in the mirror and you, you make these jabs at yourself or how you look or your body or whatever. I mean, it's, it, it is so, so important that we start to take a look at our core values, not of how we treat other people, because most of us are good people, right? Most of us like don't walk around hitting people and you know, like we, we, we have really solid core values and morals when it comes to how we represent ourselves in society. But when was the last time you created core values about who you are to yourself? Mm. Wow. Okay. I've got tons of notes here. And <laughs> Sorry. I just vomited no, all that So good. So good. And you lost a hundred pounds this first year, just changing one habit at a time. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that was another thing too, is a lot of people are like, Oh, that had to have taken for, no, because you, especially when you start to see results, oh, you yeah. embrace more change. Right. And so when it, when it was like, Oh my gosh, these, you know, size 52 jeans that I used to wear now are falling off of me. It, it, it motivates you to just embrace it more and more and more. And so, yeah, I lost a hundred pounds in, in a year or less. And, and so the results were there, you know, without having to go on hardcore diets and without, I never stepped foot into a weight room. I, you know, I just, just this kind of daily getting a little bit more active and, and changing what I ate. Amazing. Amazing. And, and the other thing I hear you saying is success is an identity process. And when you see someone that's maybe three steps ahead or doing what you want to do, some, there's a couple ways we look at it. First, you can say, oh, good for you. You know, like good for you, but I could never do that. Right. But it sounds like when you saw the elliptical lady, your thought was, I can do that. And that right. identity process brought you to a place where you actually then did it. So this is a whole identity shift for you. Yes. Yeah, no, it truly was. Um, everything that I was about prior to that change, uh, almost everything. I, I was really into uh, a musician. I was really into playing music and, and all that stuff, which I kept up uh, through this process of transforming my life. But literally everything else changed. Everything. Like, you name it. Everything changed, you know, from how I acted to my attitude, how I treated other people. Not that I was some a-hole before, but it was like, I just, I really, truly knew I needed to be a better human. Did you have to let anyone or anything go? Um, no, not to the point of like destroying relationships or anything like that. There was, and I'll, I'll share it with you here, the, the big kind of thing that was going on in our lives at the time was that my, uh, my daughter's uh, biological father, who was rarely in the picture, but active in making our lives miserable, he was the problem on a daily basis, was calling and threatening our lives. He was breaking into our home. He was... Uh, just very, very verbally abusive to my wife, uh, to myself, to our daughter. Like just, he was, he made it his, his life's mission literally on a daily basis to harass us and, 
and, and make threats against us. And as a 19, 20, 21, 22 year old kid, this, this was all consuming for me. I mm-hmm. was literally scared to death because this guy was threatening our lives, threatening to, to literally shoot me the next time. I, you know, and so you, you, uh, we tried getting the police involved and the police are like, well, this is more of a custody thing. Yeah. We, you know, we need proof that he did this stuff. And so not like, I just, I felt so alone and scared yet. I had the pressure of like, be a man, lead this family, you know, like, and it was just a very, very rough time in my life where I was, I, I was paralyzed. I didn't know what to do. So I just ate my, ate, I ate it all away, you know? And, um, that was, I think probably if anything, the biggest thing that I, I was forced to let go was through the process. And it wasn't even then when I started weightlifting and getting all the muscle, but it was like, through the process of losing this weight and kind of taking control of my life, I became much more confident in myself. And once that confident, uh, confidence in myself increased, I was able to mentally let this guy go. And it no longer affected me in the way that it did before. The threats and the, the kind of BS still continued to come for a little while, but now I was standing up for myself. <laughs> go figure. Mm-hmm. Now I was standing up for myself, and shortly after that, the threat stopped. Um, oh, wow. And so... It was one of those things where I had to get to a point where I could drop it and just realize, like, listen, I'm going to stand up for myself and my family. This has gone on for way too long, and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to protect myself and my family. And it's like it was more of me growing into myself and and getting that confidence and and believing in myself, and it allowed me to kind of let go of some of the stuff that I was harboring. Mm, You know, it's powerful resentment and that holding on to the past can kind of keep us looking in the rearview mirror, especially emotionally. But you're right. A lot of times it has to be us that chooses to move forward. And I think it's so interesting that when you stopped reacting, he eventually stopped attacking. Yeah. Yeah. It was purely just to get a rise out of us. He knew it. He knew exactly what it was doing. Yeah. And uh, the second that he saw that it wasn't effective anymore, why waste your time? Right. And so he, yeah, he stopped. Powerful, powerful. So tell me a few of the big breakthroughs you had throughout your 13-year journey. I think uh, one of the biggest ones is this confidence and belief in self that when I, it, it wasn't even, again, I kind of I look at my health and fitness journey in two, two kind of two realms. There was the weight loss realm and then there was the bodybuilding realm. And so it wasn't even when I had started, uh, started bodybuilding. I came to the realization that if I could do what I had already achieved and it wasn't like, like, Oh, I've been eating healthy for a year. Now I can do anything. It was like looking back and going, I lost all that weight in, and I've, and I've kept it off and continue to improve my life and, and myself for three, four years. Now I, I literally came to this decision or I like, I can literally do anything. If I can do this, I can do anything because I- anything else in life is, is going to follow the same principle. Massive amounts of dedication and hard work. Inundate yourself with whatever it is, whether it's a business, which now I've, I've owned several of them. If, if it's a relationship, it's, it's, it's everything is, it revolves around what I had already accomplished. And so I got this belief in myself that like, wow, what do you want to do with your life? Because you can literally do anything, which led me to quitting my corporate job, starting my own things. I've owned gyms. I've, I've, uh, you know, I've been self-employed for over a decade now. I've traveled all over the world. I've been able to do things that I never, ever, ever would have done in my prior self because now I feel incredibly limitless in my potential because the formula is just invest into it. Massive amounts of dedication and work and you're going to get whatever you want, right? Once you break through that and you feel like you can create momentum and, and you know, go after it, decide, get clear, go after it. And the, the road bumps don't become stop signs anymore. And you have that complete faith that you'll get there at some point and it'll just continue to evolve. You're right. You really can, like it could go across any spectrum. Yeah. Like it really can be anything. And so once you learn those skills, you are then able to transfer it to business, to your family. Right. So what yeah. businesses have you owned? I've owned and sold quite a few businesses. I started up a supplement company, a supplement line um, many years ago with a, a friend of mine. The friend of mine was already in the supplement industry and he was in the motocross industry. And so um, we created a training gym. It started out as like a training center for motocross riders. And we would have like world renowned motocross riders fly in. 
come to our training center, we would train them uh, on functional movements that would benefit their racing. And that led them to creating a, uh, a supplement line that we marketed specifically for the motocross industry. And that was great. That was a really fun time. We did a lot of traveling and going to races and meeting with athletes and, and promoting there. Uh, I sold that back to him when we moved. I was located in the uh, state of Washington at that time. And uh, me and my family moved from the state of Washington. So I sold a couple of businesses to him, uh, back to him at that point. And then when I, I moved to Arizona uh, from Washington, after having sold the gym and left the gym, I had all these members because I, I also did some like group fitness and personal training out of there. And, uh, and so I had all these uh, members that were messaging me on Facebook and they go, it's not the same without you. Like, you know, we, we need you. We need you. And, and they said, you know, don't like, you don't have to be here in person. Just tell us what to do. Like, tell like, put our nutrition together, put our fitness together and, and we'll do that. We'll pay you. And this was back in 2013, way before online coaching was like a thing. Now everyone is a coach, right? You go to anyone's Instagram page, they're a coach in something. <laughs> and, uh, but back in 2013, there was not, this was not happening. This, you know, and so it was a very like unique thing. Like, okay, like maybe I could make this work. And, um, and uh, coincidentally at that time, I'd also started a Facebook page, which my before and after photo kind of went semi-viral. And before you know it, I had 20,000 followers, like almost overnight. And, and had, it was getting DMs of people going, Hey, just, I look like your before photo. Like, just tell me what to do. And, and so it, it, almost overnight, again, with this new, uh, not new at that time, but with this mindset that like, I could make anything work, I will make it successful. I want to do this. I want to get back into helping people and coaching people. And, and so I created Jeremy Reed Fitness <laughs> and, uh, and I've been doing it full time since 2013. Uh, I primarily coach in the obesity market. Um, I have clients all over the world. I've traveled all over the world helping people. And, uh, and it's, it's my life now. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. And you've got lots of information, lots of nutrition and workouts and coaching and programs, eBooks. And I know you just started a new Facebook group. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I'm super excited about this one. This is my baby. And it actually, it came about because I was reflecting back. When I was in my journey, what, what was I lacking? What could have made it a better experience or an easier experience for myself? Because when I did it, I had nothing. I had no one. Like, no one else in my life was going through this journey. My wife's never had a weight problem. She's never had an eating issue. No one could relate to the struggles that I was having. And, you know, it, in along the journey, you have slip ups and you have mess ups. And yeah, there was a couple of times in, you know, in the start of the journey where I would crack and eat a whole pizza and then, then I feel this shame and guilt and all this stuff. And I couldn't tell my wife because I was felt guilty about it and shame about it. And I was like, I just felt alone. And so looking back, I was like, wouldn't it have been great had I had a community where I felt safe to be honest about my feelings, honest about my behaviors, and then now with my experience and, and all this of like, how awesome would it be to have a group of people that are going through that journey themselves where I'm coaching them, I literally walking them through and holding their hand, but in an environment where there's no haters, there's no one making fun of them. There's no one saying, Oh, I guess you just don't want it bad enough. If you slipped up and cheated, it's, it's where we can, we can be a, a group centered around just love and camaraderie and coaching and, and just elevating our lives and being successful. So <laughs> I created it. I created this group. It's, I call it the Conquer Your Mountain Collective. It has a very, very small fee. And literally the fee is just to make it so that the amount of bad eggs, the haters, the keyboard warriors will not be invited. And it's just people that are there to work on themselves and be coached by me and, and, and elevate their lives. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Cause you're right. You can do anything alone and you can speed it up and have way more fun together. That's right. Yeah. And so we've got challenges that we're doing. We got prizes we're giving away. We, my oh. wife is an amazing in the kitchen, very healthy cook. And so um, she does weekly recipes on there. I do weekly coaching videos. And then once a month we get together for a live coaching party where it's just fun and it's it, there's a coaching topic but there's also q a and it's we just interact with each other and it's, it's an amazing amazing group like i said it's just getting started but it's already exceeding my expectations as far as what we're doing so yeah I, I like if any of your listeners are are looking for a place like that this is the best out there Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. JeremyReadFitness.com. And we'll put all the links below the Conquer Your Mountain Collective. And what I hear you saying is that, yes, you give them food and, and you give them nutrition or like exercise plans and things like that. So they don't have to think they can just execute and do, which I did a bodybuilding competition myself. And when I loved that about it, I could just 
follow the plan. But you yeah. also are doing a lot of retraining their brain as well, knowing the mindset shift and identity shift that they will be working through. Yeah, that's right. And that's actually with the collective where a majority of the focus is put. Yes, there's some basic fitness guides and we talk about basic nutrition stuff. The the collective, especially for as, as uh, inexpensive as it is, is really a lot about mindset and habit coaching, lifestyle coaching, and, and really just turning around what's going on up here. There's members in there already where, you know, they, they're big into um, Zumba or CrossFit or whatever. Like they're all doing their own thing. They got, you know, we have members that, that just going for a 10 minute walk is a challenge and others that are hardcore into weightlifting. So it's not necessarily a place where it's like, listen, you're going to do my workouts and my workouts only. And this is, you know, no, it's like there's more than one way to get from point A to point B. But either way, in order for you to be successful long term, you got to work on what's going on up here. So let's focus on that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's where a lot of the coaching and the, and the, the talks are about of just retraining our brain and surrounding everything that surrounds it, our, our habits, our mindset about ourselves on food, on everything. So mm-hmm. it's, it's such an awesome place. It's my, it's my little baby. It's a, super excited about it right now. So Yeah, it is. It's exciting to see it come to life because I'm sure it brewed for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So tell me how your transformation domino affected into your family. Mostly in food, big time. You know, like I said, my wife has never had a, a weight problem, but because of my eating habits, we ate very poorly for the first probably half of our marriage and, and life together. So it was a lot of like just processed foods. It was a lot of eating out and pizzas and that kind of stuff. And then when I had to change it, I don't remember have, sitting down and having a conversation with her going, hey, I think we need to like, I think we should all do this. It was more of just like, this is what I'm doing. This is what we're doing now. <laughs> and it was like, this is what we're going to cook. And she, you know, she's uh, great. Uh, great. I mean, she's great at a lot of things, but she's got a knack for creating delicious food. And so, and so we both t- together have enjoyed cooking together and coming up with recipes. And, and so it's one of those things where it just g- it gave us that one more thing to have in common and do together of just being like, okay, we love food. We still want to love food. It, it, we can't just do plain chicken and broccoli for the rest of our lives. Let's get creative. Let's make some really good recipes and, and, and dishes and really embrace this healthy living lifestyle together. And, and so it, it, you know, just kind of fell into place and we've been doing it ever since. So That's so fun. And I, I love when they say when you grow, like everybody else grows with you, hopefully, right? And so you can grow together. And I'm sure she saw a, a crazy transformation, not just physically, but internally as well. And I love that she is a part, a part of the ride. Definitely. Definitely. And now she works out and she's like, she's, it, it is, it has positively affected her as well. Like she didn't work out before. Uh, now she works out daily. Um, we all eat healthy. Uh, my son, who was just a, a little baby when I started this, uh, this journey is now a sophomore in high school and he's into sports and he's healthy and, you know, just very health conscious. Uh, and so it, it really has like transformed my family and in the way that we live. And I'm, I'm proud that coming from a, a line of generations of obesity and heart disease and, and, uh, diabetes and everything else, I, I'm proud that I have kind of changed mm-hmm. the direction of the my family name, you know, of going mm-hmm. in a different direction. So, you know, it's cool. You're leaving a legacy. Yeah. They're yeah, going to have pictures of you on their wall and being like, my great grandpa was the <laughs> one you know, that made a difference. But right. gone, gone are the days where we can say, oh, it's in my genes. Oh, this right. is just the way I am. That's, um, that's been proven over and over again. That's just not true. And you've been able to prove that within your own family too. Correct. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. And I don't, I don't allow clients of mine to use these excuses. You're not big boned. Your body does not like being 300 pounds. You, you know, like <laughs> it, it's not your thyroid. It's not your whatever. Yes. There are legitimate issues. I have thyroid issues as well. I take thyroid pills every single day and have no problem losing weight. So <laughs> the problem is not with, the problem is not with your, you know, whatever your DNA it's up here. And that's where, that's where a lot of, a lot of my work is done. So Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Can you give me a, like a, a transformation client story that you just that pops into your mind? Sure. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I have quite a few from all over the world that I'm very proud of, but um, I always come back to a woman named Jana Roller. And uh, Jana's from Canada. She's been a client of mine for a couple of years now and has had an incredible transformation. I mean, uh, 140 pounds lost. She's competed now in bodybuilding or a bikini competitor. 
but it's just really neat to see how she has transformed mentally as well, going from incredibly self-conscious, you know, just everything you'd be when you're over 300 pounds to like vibrant and full of life and full of confidence. And she's an entrepreneur now as well. And just in love with her business and love with growing her business. And so I actually got, uh, I, I got asked earlier this year to come on the doctor's TV show on CBS. They wanted to interview me and, and, um, the producer of the show said, Hey, do you have a client that you're really proud of? And I said, yes, Jana, <laughs> and she's from Canada. They're like, awesome. So they flew Jana in. And, uh, and so Jana stayed with me and, and, and my wife and, and, uh, we all went on the show. And, and so Jana and my wife got to sit in the audience and then, they had her stand up and asked her some questions and featured her as well. But it was just, just really, really cool. I'm, I'm super proud of her. And just the, again, not only the physical transformation, but the, the mental transformation that happens is so rewarding for me to see. Yeah. She blossomed. Oh yeah. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. And so now when you see somebody who's 300 pounds, knowing what you know now, what is one thing that you just want to like, Ah, if you only yeah. knew what I knew. <laughs> it happens frequently <laughs> and very frequently. I attack everything with uh, essentially love and compassion. Me screaming at them like Jillian Michaels, and I've been on Jillian Michaels' show. I've, I know her, and that is not my approach, <laughs> nor do I think it really is effective. It's great for television, not very effective for real transformation. And so I frequently would love to walk up to people and just give them a giant hug and tell them that, it, first of all, whatever you're running from, it's going to be okay. Like we will work through it and you're going to come out this incredibly strong in the end and that anything is possible. So remove all that doubt, all that BS, that shadow voice is telling you, and let's really just take a look at your life. Hmm. I'm letting that sink in. Whatever you're running from, yeah, we can get through it together. Yeah. You're not going to run from it. We're not going to hide from it. We're not going to skip it. We're not going to jump over it. But together we can work through it. And when you do that, you become stronger. That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. A lot of times when I'm talking with my team, I'll be like, borrow my confidence. If you knew what I knew, you know, going through the mud, walking through the other side, like creating momentum, seeing change, seeing it, not just with me, but with tons of other people. If you knew what I knew, right? So That's borrow right. my confidence, borrow my confidence, trust the process. And I feel like your clients get to do the same thing. They believe you. And because they believe you, they trust the process. And in, the, in turn, they start to believe and trust themselves. Yes. Yeah. And the same thing that happened to me happens to them. The second that, uh, the second they start to see real results. So not just like, hey, I lost two pounds. You know, when you're 350 or 400, or I have clients that are 500 in the 500s, when you've lost two pounds, it's like big whoop, <laughs> right? Uh, but when they start seeing measurable progress, like, wow, I can't fit in these pants anymore. I have to buy new ones. Or uh, it, it is incredible to be able to sit on an airplane for the first time in a real seat, you know, something like that. Monumental change, um, which in, in large weight loss transformations can actually happen pretty quickly. And so when they get to that point, it's not just a, borrow my confidence thing it's now they have confidence because they once they see that they're like oh my god i'm doing this like Game we on. are doing this yeah, yeah like it's <laughs> real now it's real and so uh it just it fuels that fire and so every single measurable i don't even want to call it a milestone but things like these that happen they're, they're like this is incredible i you know I, I mean i get i will get the clients texting me pictures of them sitting in a theater like a movie theater seat because they've never been able to do that i mean think about that Things we take for granted. Yeah. Like, that's, life, that's life changing. Right. Yeah. Right. There are no benches in movie theaters. They're all the same size. They literally haven't been able to go to a movie in decades or, or you know, because they couldn't fit. And so when they are like, okay, I'm going to try, like, I'm going to try to go to a movie for, for some of us, like no big deal. But for somebody who's never been able to go or hasn't been able to go in, in, in a long time, that is, uh, it's brought tears to their eyes because they, they, it's like, I'm doing it. It's working, you know? And so I will get photos like that. I'll get photos of them just sitting in a theater seat or sitting, you know, in a, in an airplane seat and not having to use two or three seatbelt extenders. I mean, these are like big, big deals. And so what I do, what I do is when we hit these milestones, it is like celebration time. And, you know, obviously not with food, but with, uh, with it is, it is celebration time so that we can hammer home the positive reinforcement, because these are the things that we're so quick as humans to 
focus on the negatives, right? Focus on all the things we don't have or, uh, you know, all the things, all the things we still have to do or all the work, you know, but then when we have these victories, a lot of times we're like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then we throw it away and we get right back to, oh, the work and the stress and the whatever. And, and I want to do the exact opposite. I want us to sit in our accomplishments for as long as physically possible to just continually be reminding us of, of our work and, and all of the benefits that we're gaining from it. Because I'll tell you what, when you can live in a place of positivity and where you're constantly being reminded of your victories, it is a, it is a game changer, not just for your results, but for your life. Mm-hmm. You're a happier person. You literally, your life is a better experience. If you're like, you know what I did? <laughs> you know what I did last week? You know, and it, but a lot of people will do that. They'll be like, oh, yeah, it's really cool. I went to a movie. And then they throw it away and they get back to, yeah, but I still have 100 pounds to lose, right? And the focus is on what, you know, the negative rather than the positive. Does that make sense? I love that. Sit yeah. in sit in the accomplishment because you have to, I mean, the goal is that it changes the way you view yourself because you're retraining our brain, right? We're changing our I am statement. So I am now someone who can go to the movie anytime I want. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't just change my life. That changes my kids' lives, my family's lives. Like, again, it's like that is changing the trajectory of the, of all of the relationships involved and, yeah. and, and you get to support them in that legacy change. That's what an amazing job you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There's, a, there's another, I don't know what we're doing on time here, but um, I'll tell you real quickly. There's another uh, a client of mine I'm incredibly proud of. His name's Pete, um, lives in the Midwest. And when Pete came to me, he was essentially a, I want to say janitor, but he, he did like maintenance stuff for the, the college there and um, very, very low entry level blue collar job, which he'd had for almost 30 years, did not move up, stayed in the same job through the process of working with me and changing everything in his life. Uh, Pete lost 170, 70 or 190. I can't remember. A lot of weight, <laughs> a lot of weight, 170 pounds. And then he had loose skin. He went, he got uh, loose skin surgery. Now he's got abs. And the, again, we're talking about the mental transformation, the confidence that comes with this, right? So he'd sat in the same job for almost 30 years, overweight, never been married. Um, and we lost all the weight. We got uh, skin removal surgery. Before you know it, we started talking about, and this is where normally in my clients, we start transitioning over into more life coaching than anything else. Because now they've mastered health and fitness. Like they could do this. You know, like they don't need me for that, even though I do that for them. I still do the workouts and stuff. But now our coaching has turned over into life coaching. And so uh, one of the first things I said, Pete, I've gotten to know you now, and I've seen your strength. You're an incredibly strong man. I mean, look what you've done. You've lost 170 or 190 pounds. Like, there's nothing you can't do. So why are you making just above minimum wage in a job that you've been at for almost 30 years? Why are we not trying to go further? You've been to college. You are very smart. Why are we not doing that? And he didn't have a good answer for me. So we started digging into in, in, uh, improving his career. In a very short amount of time, I think in total it was like 90 days, he applied within the school that he was currently working at for a high, uh, high level white collar job, uh, went and did several rounds of interviews. Turns out he's incredibly smart and knows what he's doing and, uh, and got promoted. And so he, I, I think, doubled or tripled his salary from what he was making and, and just going from a, like just a, a blue collar job that he probably you know, aced like year one, but just sat in it for 30 years. And now because he had the confidence, because he had the the push, a little push, you know, went out and actually got something that was truly to his potential. And and it's just amazing to see, you know, like, wow, his life is totally different now. He's dating, like just all these things are like, oh my God, like it's amazing to see what true transformation looks like. I love it because you're right. Once you learn the skills, it can be applied to any aspect of your life. That's right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. You guys go to Conquer Your Mountain Collective. All the information is at jeremyreadfitness.com and the links are all down below. But Jeremy, I, I just want to say congratulations on your own transformation, but that didn't, like it didn't stop there. You are now helping to transform hundreds, if not upon thousands over the past few years. And uh, congratulations on all you and your clients' success. Thank you so much. 
so much for hanging out with us today. I want to hear your aha moment from today's amazing episode. If you could leave a review at whatever podcast player you choose to listen from, Apple Podcast, CastBox, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening from, leave a review and share with us your favorite part of today's episode. Thanks for hanging out. And remember to dream big.